Hey, what's up? I'm Steve from Linux, by the way, and today we have really exciting news that Linux hit an all-time high in market share. XDA, using stats counter data, reports that Linux has hit a record high of 5% in market share. They speculate here that this may be because of the Windows 10 end-of-life date, which is coming soon. They say here, the progress has been pretty glacial, with the operating system umbrella only gaining about 1.30% of share in the past year. However, given how long Linux has been in the game for, that 1.30% in the year is lightning fast for the operating system. It's important to note that the data that the stats counter gives us doesn't tell us why people are switching. It doesn't say, well, people are moving off of Windows 10 to Linux, et cetera, or here's why they did that. But it does tell us relative to their operating systems where we rank at. There's also a lot of complexities in that because right now I'm using the Brave browser and it makes my user agent hard to see. So if you were trying to stat me and figure out where I landed, well, maybe I even identify as something else. There's also VPNs and all sorts of things that might change traffics and have it misreport. And there is that unknown number there. So the Linux usage could actually be much higher even. For you, me, the typical Linux user, we're more likely to use tools which do that kind of thing in terms of preserving our privacy or blocking ads or things like that, which normal users don't do. And to draw it all out, if we talk about Linux users using ad blockers and VPNs and things like that, well, they'd be a pretty high percentage. Whereas normal users, they might be like here. So they might not use that stuff nearly as much. It is true over the past few years that a lot of operating systems have added privacy protecting features. Safari has added things like fingerprinting protection in the upcoming iOS 26 or blocking link tracking, etc. But those actually don't change the stats that much. So most of the tracking they do, you still know it's an iOS device or it's a Mac OS device or a Windows device, etc. And it's also true in the proprietary operating systems that they've added a lot of things that are anti-privacy. So I can't tell you the number of times Windows asks about your location or can I have your browsing data and things like that, which arguably make us less secure in a lot of ways because they may be using with third parties, etc. I first started using Linux back way before you were born, somewhere in the 90s, and I don't think there's ever been as much momentum as there is right now. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm running OMArchie, which is Arch Linux, plus a set of tools that DHH and others have contributed to make a fully running tiled uh, setup, which was really smooth, works out of the box, and you can get up and running in like 10 minutes. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link here. Definitely check that out because it's really easy to get started with, and that's what I'm running right here as you're watching the video. Since DHH has started championing Linux, uh, my entire feed is mostly that. And so you can see here he wants to talk to Palmer Lucky about getting Omarchi on this American-made computer, and Typecraft is putting it on the framework. Uh, everything is just working. Tons of people are posting about this, and it's really getting a lot of adoption. And I checked uh, on the Omarchi repo here, and we have 1.9K stars, so almost 2,000 stars already, and this thing just got released. So a lot of momentum in the Linux desktop space. And speaking of the Linux desktop space, there's also a lot of momentum on the Steam Deck. So if you go to the subreddit, you'll see most people actually posting about things that are related to the Linux desktop. So you can run a full Linux desktop on there and use that as your PC. Even one of the world's top YouTubers, PewDiePie, runs Linux on his Steam Deck, and he has a video about that too. And so it's just getting massive coverage all over the place. And then we have System76, and they've been working on Cosmic Desktop, which I'm gonna put a video out about soon. It's written in Rust. It's like Omarchi, but easy to use. You don't have to edit configuration files if you don't want, but it is fully customizable. And so I really like what they're going with it. And they're sort of like Apple, but better because they have the hardware, they have the software, they test it, they integrate it, and they're real people and you can get support and you can talk to them and they've been going to a ton of conferences. There's lots of videos on YouTube too where they're showing off Cosmic OS and some of the features there and I really like the direction where that's going. And with all that desktop hype, I also should call out that the Linux kernel continues to improve and it now even has the ability to have Rust in there. So there's a lot of great changes. Uh, they've recently updated things like made firmware a lot better, they've improved TCP, and just all the kind of fundamental things keep evolving. And that makes sense because Linux is the operating system of mobile devices and it's the operating system of the data center. And so if you look at a cloud data center breakdown, you're gonna have like 90% of the systems running Linux there. And so there's a huge critical mass there and a flywheel effect where you have all these companies using Linux like Amazon and Microsoft and Oracle and any Fortune 500 company. And when they contribute fixes back, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And we're seeing that play out in real time. I also want to call it that the media stack keeps improving. So I'm running Pipewire right now and it's working really great. And also 
if you see FFmpeg, they continue to iterate and hand tune things. And so they've done some hand tuning where they've optimized this SIMD code to get 100x boost. And this isn't the only one. It keeps happening over and over again. But what it means for Linux users is that when we play this media, a lot of that stuff calls into FFmpeg. And it means that we're just going to have this like super fast playback that can totally match what Apple's doing, which is really exciting for desktop users. And all of this ends up being more important than ever. So if you've looked at all the passion and energy DHH has put in, well, a lot of that was inspired by Apple sort of doing the wrong thing over time. So Apple has this control over the American mobile market, which means that they can say who makes an app and who doesn't. And if they give you the privilege of making your app available, where well, they're gonna want 30% of that, and they're gonna tell you how you can pay and what you can do. And you can't do a whole host of things like compile code in an app or things like that, that we might need. So you might wanna run Visual Studio Code in there, and you might wanna have a Python container and all sorts of things. Well, iOS says no way. And if you look at the iOS browser ecosystem, there isn't one. It's just these Safari libraries, and then there's a skin on top. It's not like they're real different browsers. Whereas on Android and on Linux, these are truly different browsers, and that allows for innovation and speed and competition and all sorts of things. Things have gotten a lot better in terms of the ecosystem of apps because it's truly a web-based world now. So you would never just launch an app on Mac OS anymore, and their market share also is not that great. And so if you're looking at something like what's the newest thing with AI or what's coming up, you're never just going to target Mac OS. And so that means that we get a lot of those apps also. And so nobody's left behind. And if anything, we can help lead that way because we're in a truly open platform. And I know there's lots of different opinions on this, but I'm going to give you mine, which is that I'm excited for the LLMs and the AI, depending on what you want to call it, to improve Linux and to fix bugs and to find security holes that we didn't know about before and just accelerate that progress. Because what it means for somebody like me is that I can take Claude code or I can take open code or any of these models and I can make these custom tools or improve things where maybe I didn't have the time or the energy or the knowledge to get involved in it. And so if you take something like Cosmic Desktop, it's written all in Rust. Well, day to day, I'm writing Go, I'm not writing Rust, but I can make an LLM serviceably make a Rust component and help me with that. And then Rust itself will provide a lot of error checking and guarantees to make sure that it's relatively safe too. And so I can see that really being something that enables us to make the programs we want and the capabilities we want and make everybody a creator. So if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out, but also let me know what you're thinking. I know we've all heard it's the year of Linux desktop. And for some of us, it's been the year of the Linux desktop. Like you can just run Linux. But it's also all over the place now, and we have momentum. And do you see it going up or down? Let me know below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.